In Norse mythology, Hel is the queen of the realm of the dead. All people who die from an illness, age, or in a way considered dishonorable by the gods and goddesses will end up in her realm called Helheim. In the Viking Age, anyone who died in battle would not be sent Helheim. Hel is a Jotun, and she is the daughter of the trickster Loki and the giantess Angerboda. She has two siblings, the world serpent also known as Jormungandr, and the Fenrir wolf. They have no relationship with each other and roam in separate places in the world. Hel is definitely not a goddess, and it is a misconception when people assume that she is the goddess of death. She is a queen, as opposed to a goddess. While her father Loki could be considered a demigod, because he is a half Jotun and half Ashi has no status among the gods and is not recognized by anyone as such. Her appearance is described as being half flesh-colored, just like a living human being, and half blue. Her personality traits are described as threatening, harsh, and cruel. The Old Norse word Hel, which in Old English is Hel, derives from the Indo-European word Kel. Therefore, both of the words can be translated into, hide, or, cover, in modern English. It was Odin the chief of the Aesir who threw Hel down from the sky into the depths of the underworld. Hel then made the underworld into her own realm and crowned herself Queen of Helheim. Helheim also called Hel is surrounded by a tall fence, and the river Elivagar flows right next to the entrance. The gates of Hel are called Corpse Gates, Old Norse, Nagrinder, and they are located in the Nippa Cave, Old Norse, Nippahelir, where the dog, named Garmer which means Hellhound, is howling every time new people arrive. According to Jackson Crawford's translation of the Poetic Edda, the dog Garmer could also be Fenrir because both of them are described as chained up. The dragon Nidhogg, Old Norse, Nihagar, is always nearby chewing on one of Yggdrasil's roots when the dragon hears the howling from the dog. It comes flying into the cave to suck the blood out of all the dead people, so they become completely pale. When all of the blood has been sucked out of their bodies, it is easier for Hel to get them into her army of the dead. The army will at Ragnarok embark on the ship Nagfar which has been built by using the nails of the dead. Hel and her army will then set sail for Vigrid, where the final battle to end all battles will take place. Hel has a huge hall, and inside her hall, everything has names associated with misfortunes. For instance, her dining table is called Hunger and the knives are called Starvation. In her bedroom, she has her bed called Sick Bed, encapsulated with curtains called Misfortune. The one and only myth featuring Hel, is the poem, The Death of Baldur. In this, Hermod the Brave volunteered to ride down into the darkness for nine days on Sleipnir to bring Baldur back from the dead. When he came to the river Joel, one of Elivagar's eleven rivers, he had to cross the Joel Bridge into Helheim. But he was stopped by the maiden Modgen who demanded that he explain what he wanted before he was allowed to pass. When he met Hel in her realm, she would only agree to let Baldur return with him, if every last thing in the universe would weep for him. Everything did weep, except a giantess named Ak. No matter what the Acer did, she refused to shed a single tear for him. It is believed that this was Loki in a disguise, and another one of his tricks to ruin everything for the Acer. Because of this, the Acer failed to get him back from the dead, and Baldur will stay in Helheim until Ragnarok. Everything did weep, except a giantess named Ak. No matter what the Acer did, she refused to shed a single tear for him. It is believed that this was Loki in a disguise, and another one of his tricks to ruin everything for the Acer. Because of this, the Acer failed to get him back from the dead, and Baldur will stay in Helheim until Ragnarok. The pagan version of Hel is not the same as the Christian version where you get tortured and punished. When Baldur arrived at Hel, he was welcomed as a guest of honor, and he was served fresh food. You will, at least, in the case of Hermod be allowed to enter and leave again, if you are not dead. Jacob Grimm described Hel as an example of a half-goddess, one who cannot be shown to be either wife or daughter of a god, and who stands in a dependent relation to higher divinities, and argued that half-goddesses stand higher than half-gods in Germanic mythology. Grimm regarded Hel, whom he refers to here as Halja, the theorized proto-Germanic form of the term, as essentially an image of a greedy, unrestoring, female deity, and theorized that the higher we are allowed to penetrate into our antiquities, the less hellish and more godlike may Halja appear. 
He compared her role, her black color, and her name to the Indian Bhavani, who travels about and bays like Nirthas and Holda, but is likewise called Kali or Mahakali, the great black goddess, and concluded that Halja is one of the oldest and commonest conceptions of our heathenism. He theorized that the Helhist, a three-legged horse that in Danish folklore roams the countryside, as a harbinger of plague and pestilence, was originally the steed of the goddess Hel, and that on this steed Hel roamed the land, picking up the dead that were her due. He also says that a wagon was once ascribed to Hel. 42. In her 1948 work on death in Norse mythology and religion, The Road to Hell, Hilda Ellis Davidson argued that the description of Hell as a goddess in surviving sources appeared to be literary personification, the word Hell generally being used simply to signify death or the grave, which she states naturally lends itself to personification by poets. While noting that, whether this personification has originally been based on a belief in a goddess of death called Hell, was another question. She stated that she did not believe the surviving sources gave any reason to believe so, while they included various other examples of supernatural women, who seem to have been closely connected with the world of death, and were pictured as welcoming dead warriors. She suggested that the depiction of Hell, as a goddess, in Gilfaginning, might well owe something to these. In a later work, 1998, Davidson wrote that the description of Hell found in Chapter 33 of Gilfaginning, hardly suggests a goddess, but that, in the account of Hermod's ride to Hell later in Gilfaginning, Hell, speaks, with authority as ruler of the underworld, and that from her realm, gifts are sent back to Frigg and Fulla by Baldur's wife Nana as from a friendly kingdom. She posited that Snorri may have, earlier turned the goddess of death into an allegorical figure, just as he made Hell, the underworld of shades, a place, where wicked men go, like the Christian Hell, Gilfaginning. She then, like Grimm, compared Hell to Kali. On the other hand, a goddess of death who represents the horrors of slaughter and decay is something well known elsewhere. The figure of Kali in India is an outstanding example. Like Snorri's Hell, she is terrifying to in appearance, black or dark in color, usually naked, adorned with severed heads or arms or the corpses of children, her lips smeared with blood. She haunts the battlefield or cremation ground and squats on corpses. Yet for all this she is the recipient of ardent devotion from countless devotees who approach her as their mother. Davidson further compared Hell to early attestations of the Irish goddesses Badibi, described in the destruction of Dachoka's hostel as dark in color, with a large mouth, wearing a dusky mantle, and with gray hair falling over her shoulders, or, alternatively, as a red figure on the edge of the fort, washing the chariot of a king doomed to die, and the morrigan. She concluded that, in these examples, here we have the fierce destructive side of death, with a strong emphasis on its physical horrors, so perhaps we should not assume that the gruesome figure of Hell is Holy Snorri's literary invention. John Lindo stated that most details about Hell, as a figure, are not found outside of Snorri's writing in Gilfaginning, and that when older skaldic poetry, says that people are, in, rather than, with, Hell, we are clearly dealing with a place rather than a person, and this is assumed to be the older conception. He theorizes that the noun and place hell likely originally simply meant, grave, and that, the personification came later. Lindo also drew a parallel between the personified hell's banishment to the underworld and the binding of Fenrir as part of a recurring theme of the bound monster, where an enemy of the gods is bound but destined to break free at Ragnarok. There continues to be debate over if hell should be considered a goddess, half-goddess or queen. Decide for yourself.